United Nations adopted its Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities for the Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities. India signed the said convention and subsequently ratified the same in 2007. Being a signatory to the convention, India had an international obligation to comply with the said convention which required entirely new legislation. Hence, the earlier law, the Persons with Disabilities Act 1995, was replaced by the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016, an act that aims to uphold the dignity of every person with a disability in our society and prevent any form of discrimination. A country celebrates 75 years of independence, undoubtedly a moment of great pride, glory and joy. A fresh series of Sansa TV, 75 years, laws that shaped India, is a unique program deliberating different laws that have been adopted during these golden years. I'm your host, Heman Batra, back with another episode in that series. Today, our focus will be on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. In short, the RPD Act. The act that empowers persons with disability to enjoy the right to equality and life with dignity. In other words, full and effective participation and inclusion in society. To talk about this exceptional law, we have with us a panel of highly distinguished expert guests in the studio. We have with us senior advocate J.P. Singh, fondly known as J.P. amongst the legal fraternity. J.P. is an accomplished mediator, so much so that he has conducted over 400 mediations and has been appointed mediator in several important and large disputes by the Supreme Court and the Delhi High Court. Welcome, JP. Thank Welcome you to so the much. studio. Thank you. We also have with us an accomplished academician, activist, and author, Professor Vageshwari Deswal. She's an advisor and chancellor nominee in several universities and other academic institutions. She's currently working as a professor at Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. Welcome, Professor. Welcome to the Sunset TV studios. So let's get on with our discussion and let me come to you first, uh, JP. JP, this law is, is, a, is a lengthy law. You know, the, the statute, the act is, is very detailed, comprehensive and extensive. More than 15 chapters, more than 100 sections. So I thought, let's get to the specifics of the act straight away. Let me ask you, a question on which I feel the entire premise and foundation of this act rests, which is the persons with disability. You know, the, the act actually categorizes persons with disability uh, in, in three categories. Uh, one with benchmark disability, then with long-term disability, and those who are in need of high support. So can you please tell our viewers about these categories and, and what do they signify? Thank you, Hemant. But, you know, I want to start with the uh, observations made by one of our judges in the in judgment in Delhi High Court. He said this word disability somehow, you mm. know, applying it to, when it comes to children, it really sounds awful. Yes, you're right. I mean, we can call those children with special needs special children or differently able or different no yeah. because this disable disable word as such i find yeah. quite jarring in that sense yeah, it's you know? stigmatizing i, mean, I feel yeah, stigmatizing I've, yeah I, I, even exactly. i exactly so. Yeah. so so therefore i would like to begin with that mm -hmm. yes when you talk about the act see people with benchmark disability the act says are people who have disability a specified disability with more than 40% not less than 40% of that particular disability and 
to find out what kind of disability that we are talking about, those specified disabilities, we have to go to the schedule. The schedule says specifies four kind. I mean, I have tried to divide them into four kinds of uh, you know disabilities. One, I say physical disability, right? Intellectual disability, mental behavior, and disability caused due to chronic neurological conditions or blood disorder. Right. And the fifth category is like you know when you have multiple disorders. Right. So under the physical disability, what? the kind of uh, disabilities which are specified are locomotor disability, mm. leprosy cured persons, I see. cerebral palsy, mm. dwarfism, mm. muscular dystrophy, mm. acid attack victims, mm -hmm. now coming to visual impairment, blindness, mm -hmm. low vision, coming to hearing impairment, deaf, a person categorized as having more than 17 decibels hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Then we have hard of hearing people, mm -hmm. that's between 60 to 70 decibel hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Then we have speech and language disability, children mm -hmm. have that too. Mm -hmm. Then we have intellectual disability, the, the other category, that is about specific learning disabilities <clears throat> some people have. Autism spectrum disorder, mm -hmm. that's what one is also defined. Then mental behavior is about mental illness. Right. The fourth disability, which I talked about, chronic neurological conditions such as multiple sclerosis, mm. Parkinson's disease, blood disorder like hemophilia, mm. thalassemia, sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. And of course, the multiple disabilities. So and the more list than is, one. is quite extensive. Quite a, quite a large number quite a of large number. categories yeah. which are yeah. covered. And then uh, these categories are basically you know, of, of, of the three categories I mentioned, uh, basically belong to, to the, the, the people who fall under these, under, under the schedule. See, if you see 2S, which when it talks about section 2S, talks about persons with disability, it means a person with long-term physical needs, mm -hmm. physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment, which they find difficult to interact with the society. Like, you know, they cannot be simply right. equal with the others. And then you have persons with disability having high support needs, Right. That again is, a, is what is certified. See, Section 58 right. talks about authorities which certify. Right. 57 Otherwise, talks, anybody could claim that. Yes. 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 So it has to be certified. Se under Section 57, 50. 58 provides for procedure in right. which you can get that certificate right. from those right. uh, authorities. Right. Right. Thank you. And, and so once you have that certificate, then you come under one of these uh, right. Right. categories. Right. Uh, Professor uh, Deswal, uh, you know, the, the Supreme Court and... and Several other high courts uh, of, of, of in, in India, you know, belonging to different states, have passed judgments uh, at different points in time, uh, whereby they have protected and forced rights of uh, differently abled uh, people, uh, and and they have actually recognized those rights as constitutional rights or fundamental rights. But now we have this statute which has specific provisions with regard to rights and entitlements. Uh, to, to the, the people uh, who are differently abled. So uh, can you throw some light on, on those provisions of, of, of the law? The best part about this law is it terms a chapter, the title of the chapter has been given, Rights and Entitlements. See, this is such a progressive move. So far, we have had laws wherein we had chapters entitled Rights of the People for who, whosoever was the beneficiary of the law. But this law, it has specifically used this progressive term, which is entitlements. Yes. See, rights have a very broad dimension. Rights can be natural, they can be constitutional. They are something which are very basic to human existence, some things which cannot be taken away from us. But when we talk about entitl entitlements, it implies that there is a positive obligation on the state to ensure that these things are provided to the beneficiaries for whom these entitlements are right. lent. So, in fact, it obligates the state to provide these positive reinforcements to ensure that rights of persons with disabilities, they are protected and ensured. Yes. So, uh, the rights that have been provided under this law are like uh, uh, every person who is suffering from any kind of a disability, they have all the rights that have been guaranteed under our constitution. 
So this is a law which fulfills the constitutional obligations that are given under Article 14, which talks about right to equality. Yeah, so it no, corresponds to that, except that it sort of elaborates it in a way. Yes. Yeah. So, like when we talk about right to equality, Article 14 is there. Yes. Then Article 15, freedom from any form of discrimination. Then we have this, uh, uh, what, what we call uh, uh, freedom of movement, freedom of uh, speech and expression that is given yes. under Article yeah. 19. Then we have Article 21, which talks about right to live uh, with dignity. Dignity, okay, yes. Not a mere animal existence. Right. So this is a law which promises all those rights and much more. Much because, see, more. we are also obligated under the UN Convention, Convention on Protection yes. of Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Otherwise, we had uh, uh, you know, sufficient constitutional machinery and, and protection uh, yes. by virtue of the framework of fundamental rights. But yeah. uh, as you rightly said that, you know, as India was party to the convention and we, we needed to have an a specific statute. And that is why we already had a law in 1995, but we yes. revised the entire absolutely, law. Absolutely, absolutely. And then you see, we also have the directive principle under Article 41, yes. which directs the state to ensure that nobody suffers from any kind of a sickness or disability. Right. to provide protection to those persons. So the rights that we have under this law, they protect all the persons from any kind of a discrimination. Nobody can be subject to any form of a discrimination, ridule, ridicule, or they have every right to a social, political, and economic uh, participation in the community life. Nobody can be deprived of their housing. Nobody can be driven out of any community. Mm. This law also talks about reproductive rights. It is the duty of the state mm. to ensure that each one of them has access to all these, um, what we call as uh, birth control measures. Right. And they cannot be compelled to undergo uh, forced sterilization or abortion. This law, also, it also has a gender perspective. See, for the first time, we have a law which says and acknowledges that women are also the same as all other human beings and they cannot be discriminated on any account. And what it also so says... So it is gender neutral in that sense and, and has got a humanitarian... Uh, a touch uh, definitely. To, to, to it as Definitely. Well. Yes. And it also says that we need to provide special schemes for women suffering from disability so that they can be self-reliant and they can also take care of their children. Right. In addition, this is a law which also includes acid uh, attack survivors in the category of persons uh, as, suffering from uh, disability. Uh, so JP although, had pointed out. Uh, yes, so correct. although we say that acid attack is a gender neutral offense, it can take place against men and women, but the statistics show right. that there is a marked gender skew. The majority of victims are women only. Then but, if there is anyone who is suffering from any kind of a discrimination on account of their disability, so anyone, whether it is any a neutral observer, whether it is a non-governmental organization, anyone has the right to go and complain in front of the executive magistrate. I see. The moment a police officer comes to know about that, he is obligated under the law to immediately meet that person, to give any redressal, immediately whatever is available and right. in addition to that he is supposed to tell that person that see you have a right to complain you have a right to legal aid you have a right to approach uh, the executive magistrate this is the concerned executive magistrate who has jurisdiction over this area and this is the concerned organization that can provide you any other kind of an assistance right then uh, all persons suffering from disability they also have a right to financial independence they can also seek credits loans from the bank. They can also take their financial decisions regarding other decisions also. Yeah, so this uh, is, is basically empowering them in, in a way. In I think we'll uh, continue our discussion after the, the break. Uh, well, uh, as you know that under the, the, the Act, persons with disabilities have several rights and entitlements regarding education, employment, social security, healthcare, rehabilitation, recreation, and so on. And for achieving them, the Act provides for a regulatory framework through comprehensive institutionalization. We will continue the discussion with our guests after a very short break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back after the break. 
You're watching our special show on 75 years of legislative journey. Today we are discussing the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. Let us view some glimpses of debates from inside the parliament in respect of this law. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Bill was introduced in the Rajya Sabha on 7th February 2014 by the then Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment, Sri Malgarjun Kharge, and was eventually passed by the Rajya Sabha on 14th December 2016. And by the Lok Sabha on 16th December 2016 after considering the Standing Committee report dated 7th May 2015 on the said bill. The Gazette notification of the Act was issued on 28th December 2016 with the assent of the President and the Act came into force on 19th April 2017. We now show you some extracts of parliamentary debates on this Act. Ye jo bill hum la rahe hai, पुराने बिल की तुलना में इसमें बहुत क्रांतिकारी परिवर्तन हमने करने का प्रयास किया है जैसे पहले दिव्यांगों की श्रेणी केवल सात होती थी इस बिल में सात की बजाय वो 21 श्रेणियां होगी द बिल विल बेनिफिट टू अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स विद मल्टीपल इंपेयरमेंट्स वो आर द मोस्ट डिसएडवांटेज सेक्शंस अमंग द सिटीजंस किस प्रकार से एक दिव्यांग व्यक्ति को समाज में समानता से जीने का अधिकार है उसके समानता के अधिकार को सुनिश्चित करने के लिए पूरे प्रावधान किए गए हैं समाज के अनेक व्यक्ति के समान अन्य व्यक्तियों के समान उसको अधिकार दिए गए हैं और सरकार को कानून के माध्यम से यह सुनिश्चित किया जाएगा कि दिव्यांग व्यक्ति के अधिकारों में कोई भी प्रकार का धन कोई भी प्रकार का हनन कोई व्यक्ति या कोई संस्थान उसके अधिकारों का हनन नहीं कर पाए वेन वी हैव इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ डिसेबिलिटीज वाई डिड वी रेड्यूज द रिजर्वेशन परसेंटेज एज कम्पेयर टू द प्रपोज बिल ऑफ टू in 2014 bill the recommendation was to have 5% reservation a private entities ko bhi iske andar daare mein le aaye nahi to sarkar ke taraf se to hote the lekin hamare yahan jo niji kshetra jis tarah se badh raha hai usko bhi isme aap shamil kiye ye achhi baat hai so continuing with our discussion uh, jp uh, this act has uh, empowering provisions as well you know जैसे जो लोग डिसेबिलिटीज में हैं उन उनको एम्पावरिंग के लिए उनके एक 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 पूरा फ्रेमवर्क है एजुकेशन रिलेटेड स्किल डेवलपमेंट रिलेटेड हो गया हेल्थ रिलेटेड हो गया सोशल सिक्योरिटी रिलेटेड हो गया रिक्रिएशन और सब तो एम्पावरिंग के वो क्या प्रावधान हैं इस एक्ट में हेमंत जी प्रोफेसर देसवाल ने हमें बताया राइट्स के बारे में You rightly said that कि आप उनको enforce या उनकी empowerment किस तरह हुई इस act में and जो मेरे पास थोड़े से अभी जैसे हमने debate सुनी मेरे पास जो थोड़े से थोड़ा सा data है that is as per census of 2011 we were given to understand कि दो 2.68 करोड़ persons are there in India with disabilities out of that is about 2.21 percent जब हम उस समय 2011 की बात करते हैं और उसमें से 1.5 करोड़ वर मेल एंड 1.16 करोड़ वर फीमेल। सो देवर दिस इज़ अ वेरी लार्ज नंबर व्हेन वी आर टॉक व्हेन वी आर लुकिंग एट दैट तो इट इज़ अ वेरी प्रोग्रेसिव लॉ। ओवरवेलमिंग फिगर्स हैं। यस एंड सो इन दैट सेंस इट्स अ वेरी प्रोग्रेसिव लॉ। जैसा आपने कहा ये जो एक्ट है � which deal with those empowering provisions. Section 16 has said that it should not be in discrimination in school. And in every government school or government institution, funded institution, it has been brought to them that there will be no discrimination and they have education, sports, recreational facilities, transport. They should be given to them. That is what section 16 says. And in 17, it was said that specially trained people, who have their needs, can address them. 
तो सेक्शन 17 सेज यू मस्ट हैव दोस स्पेशली ट्रेन्ड स्टाफ एंड प्रोफेशनल्स देन इफ यू सी चैप्टर फोर में सेक्शन 20 जो है वी टॉक्स ऑफ देर शुड नॉट बी एनी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन मैटर्स ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट and in fact they have said there should be 4% reservation mm -hmm. under section 32 uh -huh. so far as uh, employment of Haan, reservation of poverty elevation of kabhi pravadhan ji ha, ek ji then section 24 says that you know the government should endeavor to actually make them give them means to so that they can live independently oh and also community centers. They should centers. be, uh, 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 you know, self-sufficient and no, should not financially community independent. Community centers should be. Yes. And in fact, looking at the government's economic situation, they have said there should be measures so that can have cultural participation with equality, recreational uh, facilities should be there. Right. There should be mentor in, in sporting activities, they should be able to participate. And that is, we are seeing. Uh, uh, Paralympics or a sub uh, at, at, at the global level at the hai. global level Ji haan. Haan. and uh, <coughs> healthcare ke mein hai. they must promote healthcare and not even promote healthcare hmm. they should be also able to prevent you know uh, disabilities actually coming uh, into uh, being in in future hmm. so hmm. ek to hai bachon mein ya hmm. disability hai but kaise hum unko prevent kar sakte hain हाँ उसका भी प्रावधान है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल गवर्नमेंट पे रिस्पांसिबिलिटी डाली गई है कि ये बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण एक एक प्रावधान है कि ये भी आप स्टडी कीजिए कि किस तरह से आप कर सकते हैं एंड फिर उन्होंने क्या किया कि दे हैव प्रोवाइडेड यू नो पहली बात तो उन्होंने कहा है कि हर एस्टेब्लिशमेंट मस्ट नोटिफाई तो ग्रीवांस ड्रिवर उसके पास कंप्लेंट फाइल कर देते हैं एंड उनके पास ये है कि विद इन 15 डेज उनको डिसाइड करना पड़ता है एंड दे हैव टू मेंटेन अ रिकॉर्ड सो इसलिए दे हैव दे हैव मेड इट वेरी स्ट्रिंजेंट कि सो दैट कि ये जो प्रावधान जो भी ये जो भी एम्पावरमेंट की जो ये बातें की गई हैं उनकी एनफोर्समेंट भी हो ये एम्पावरिंग प्रोविजंस हैं ये एम्पावरिंग प्रोविजंस मेरे हिसाब से मीनिंगलेस हो जाते हैं अगर सरकार की तरफ से पूरी सपोर्ट ना हो तो सरकार के ऊपर भी मेरे हिसाब से काफी रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज और ड्यूटीज और ऑब्लिगेशंस इंपोज करी गई हैं या कहें प्रोवाइड की गई हैं इस एक्ट में आप कुछ � कि हर एक स्टेट गवर्नमेंट या सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट अपने जो है कमिश्नर के थ्रू या स्टेट कमिश्नर है जो सेंट्रल कमिश्नर है उसके थ्रू वो स्कीम्स क्लोट करेंगे जिसमें कि वो अवेयरनेस स्प्रेड करना और सेंसिटाइजेशन ये दो मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हैं जो स्टेट स्टेट के हैं चाहे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के चाहे स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के अब उसके लिए उन्हें क्या करना है चाहे स्किल डेवलपमेंट वर्कशॉप्स हों कैपेसिटी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स हों या फिर वर्कशॉप्स इस तरीके की ऑर्गेनाइज की जाए जहाँ की सेंसिटाइज किया जाए जिसमें कि जो लोग सफर कर रहे हैं डिसेबिलिटी से उनके प्रति एक एम्पेथी जेनरेट हो सो दैट पीपल अंडरस्टैंड कि ये भी हम में से ही हैं और एक इंक्लूसिविटी प्रमोट हो सोसाइटी में इसके लिए जैसे कि हम बात करते हैं कि राइट right है हमारे पास वोट करने का लेकिन जब तक उनके पास एक्सेसिबिलिटी नहीं होगी उन जहाँ पर भी पोलिंग बूथ है या फिर इफ दे are not provided with such material uh, which will uh, support them to participate in this electoral process, then the right to vote is meaningless. So this is the concern. So facilitating a mechanism, Accessi accessibility or facilitating Haan, mechanism is very important for the government to take a lot of जी बिल्कुल जैसे कि जितनी भी buildings हैं उनको completion certificate तब तक नहीं दिया जाएगा जब तो कि वो disability को तब तक उनको completion certificates भी नहीं दिए जाएंगे उसके इलावा जितनी भी government की schemes हैं programs हैं उनका एक social audit किया जाएगा time to time ये देखने के लिए कि जो program है या जो हमारा idea था वो fulfill हो रहा है कहीं उसकी बजाय कोई नुकसान तो नहीं हो रहा है और उसको और हम better कैसे कर सकते हैं जितने भी schools हैं जितने भी employment offices हैं हर जगह पर इस तरीके की sensitization workshops को organize किया जाना है और जै कुछ लोग होते हैं और ग्राउंड लेवल पे हो रहा है क्या एनफोर्समेंट हो रहा है क्योंकि ये तो हम अभी बात कर रहे हैं बुकिश बात कर रहे हैं 
जो प्रावधान है क्या वो एक्चुअली में ग्राउंड लेवल पे एनफोर्स भी हो रहे हैं देखिए सर जैसे अगर हम बड़े शहरों की बात करें अगर हम दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी की बात करें तो वहाँ पर बहुत टाइम से बातचीत चल रही है कि हमें एक सेंटर फॉर डिसेबिलिटी स्टडीज शुरू करना है जे में I think mm -hmm. uh, because I met a professor who was working at that uh, Center for Disability Studies, and then uh, there uh, is a specific college in Delhi University, Kirori Mal College, जहाँ पर कि इस तरीके का उन्होंने एक certificate course शुरू किया है, जहाँ कि they are talking about rights of persons suffering from disability. अच्छा इन एडिशन टू दैट कुछ ऐसे लोग होते हैं हु आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम अ बेंच मार्क डिसेबिलिटी, जो उनमें कि minimum 40 percent की disability होती है तो If they require a high support, तो इस लॉ में ये भी प्रोविजन है कि वो अपने जो भी उनका जो अप्रोप्रिएट अथॉरिटी है उसको कॉन्टैक्ट करें और वो जो अप्रोप्रिएट अथॉरिटी है उनकी जो एप्लीकेशन है उसको एक असेसमेंट के लिए आगे भेजेगा और अगर बोर्ड सर्टिफाई कर देता है उस चीज़ को दैट येस दिस पर्सन ही एक्चुअली डिजर्व दिस हाई सपोर्ट सो देन द अप्रोप्रिएट अथॉरिटी विल इंश्योर कि जितने भी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के या सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की कोई स्कीम्स हैं जिससे उनको बेनिफिट हो सकता है कोई फंड प्रोवाइड किए जा सकते so they should all be provided to that person well it is time to take the viewers question this time the question has come from student chirag mulchandani let's listen in how do you punish a person who insults ill treats or humiliates any person with disability jp would you like to take this yes uh, you know uh, when the 1995 act was there there was only a provision for punishment in case if you took some benefits which oh. a disabled person was entitled to oh. but now in the 2016 act there is section 92 right which has which says that you know the punishment is from 6 months to 5 years along I with see. fine right and the kind of categories they have specified are whoever intentionally insults or intimidates with intent to humiliate a person with disability in any place within public view that's oh. one category right. assaults or uses force to any person with disability with intent to dishonor him or outrage the modesty of a woman with disability having the actual charge or control over a person with disability voluntarily or knowingly denies food or fluids to him or a being in a position to dominate the will of a child or a woman with disability and uses that position to exploit her sexually theek hai voluntarily injures or damages or interferes with the use of any limb oh. you know of a of a person performs any con conduct which will interfere with her medical procedures to be performed on a woman with disability all these have been oh. provided so this is stringent it's very stringent very stringent and, and they have, they have, then there there's another thing that they say in case if the offense that you have committed is under the general law the punishment is larger oh you can even be tried for that offense the larger offense larger offense as well oh. as well so therefore 92 and the other provisions now have become very stringent you cannot actually in insult or it's, it's a it will be a big deterrent as well big deterrent for for, people. for, for uh, you know people who have been indulging in uh, uh, these kind of offenses yes. or you know contemplating you know, people who have especially people who have domi do, you know dominion or domain over or a, you know trust basically children oh, right who are vulnerable women yes and and they are specifically provided in case if you do anything right which insults her or which actually you know amounts to an insult in public view or otherwise i think this is fairly adequate I yes think. well today's enlightening discussion has echoed a rational and sensitive change in thinking about disability from only a social welfare concern to a human rights subject matter as well a law that strengthened our commitment to human kind on that note we need to conclude the program thank you so much jp singh uh, dr vigeshwari deswal for enlightening us sharing your expert views well that's all we have in this edition of the program you can also connect with us on various other social media platforms thank you for tuning in goodbye and namaskar